another of our programs about innovation and creativity. Cutting edge material designed to inform and inspire creative people everywhere into a brighter future. Hello, this is Ernie Tatro, and we're bringing you another in a series of programs on energy from the Edison Exploratorium in downtown Schenectady. And as we said at the opening, our guest is Dr. Frank Wicks. And I've known Dr. Wicks for a long time, and I've probably interviewed you at least a half a dozen different times over the years. Always a very interesting interview. I want to ask you, um, as an energy expert, do you think we'll be ever able to do what uh, politicians keep talking about, becoming the United States becoming uh, energy independent? Do you think that will happen any time, maybe in the next 25, 50 years? I guess, uh, you know, there's many kinds of energy, and the energy that's most vital is oil. And in terms of becoming oil independent, based on the consumption we have right now, uh, there's, uh, we're going to become more and more dependent all the time. Uh, in 19, uh, if you go back during World War II, the United States was producing twice as much oil as we were using, so we were basically the uh, Saudi Arabia of oil. As about 1970, our production uh, was about equal to our consumption. So that's the time when we first became a net importer, and we also peaked at about 12 million barrels a day. It's been downhill since then, so we went from importing a net uh, no, nothing in 1970 to about 55 percent import right now. So the world's supply of oil is gradually declining. Right. So at some time in the future, we won't be able to use oil for energy, right? Yeah, if you go back to 1859, 150 years ago, uh, no one imagined you could dig a hole in the ground and get a liquid fuel out of it. And down Oil City, Pennsylvania, they did that at 69 foot. And uh, the initial effect was to save the whales. Uh, the whales were being slaughtered, uh, about 10,000 whales a year if you're lighting. And uh, the, uh, it's immediately the oil, they extracted the kerosene for lamps, threw away the rest. And uh, so the first oil boom was just uh, kerosene from crude oil for lighting. And it's interesting when Edison invented the light bulb in 1879, in his uh, lab notebook he has a funny face of a light bulb and underneath he says the end of oil. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so the light bulb automatically, you know, did compete with oil then. You could have coal, you know, making steam to drive a, an old steam engine to drive his dynamo down on Pearl Street and light surrounding you no know, blocks. So you basically were, were so, so it was not, so oil was used only for kerosene up until about 1900. And then the cars, the internal combustion engine, the gasoline engine allowed for the gasoline not be wasted but used in gasoline engines. And uh, then, you know, ships started. You know, the British Navy went to oil and that made them a global power. The United States about 1910 went to oil for the Navy. And that's, so uh, navies that go around the world are required to, uh, but uh, the petrochemicals were first developed, plastics at that time. And uh, aviation took off. And uh, so, uh, and, and then with cars you needed roads so you had to use the heavy oil or the oil asphalt for roads. So, and finally, the natural gas that came out the well, well was being wasted, flared, and that ultimately uh, you know, went into pipelines. So every, all the hydrocarbons that come out of the ground are now being fully utilized. Okay, if not oil, what? For example, supposedly we have enough uh, coal yeah. to provide uh, electrical energy for the next 50 years. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, the, the coal might last for uh, coal, coal, coal will last for maybe 50 years, 100 years. We, but uh, again, in all things, you, you, you pick the, low, the, the low-lying fruit first, and then you have to go after the harder stuff. Will we ever have clean coal? Uh, uh, that's kind of a misnomer. Uh, clean coal, you can take the sulfur dioxide out, so you don't put it in the air, but you basically put it in the landfill. And what we had down in Tennessee just a, a few weeks ago was a uh, coal was basically the landfill for coal, you no know, busted and you no, know, you know, basically contaminated some land. So you, coal always ha coal always has sulfur with it, some more or less. 
but the carbon dioxide, the stuff that causes global warming, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. As some people think there is something, they think you can dig a hole in the ground and sequester it, but uh, that should, I, in, my up, in my own opinion, that, that should be recognized as totally unrealistic. Can we make a liquid fuel out of coal? Uh, you, you can, and that's what uh, Germany did during World War II and what South Africa does now. So you have the chemistry to convert you know, coal into liquid fuel, but it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's basically a, it's, 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 a chemical, it's a chemical plant that's uh, highly polluted in itself. Is there ever going to be a way to clean that up so that we can you know, uh, survive with just uh, so-called clean coal? Uh, I guess my own view was in terms of taking the contaminants out you've done as you're already doing as well as you practically can. Uh, up and uh, probably a defining point is about 1970 when the environmental laws were you know, passed on the federal and state level. Prior to that there was really no regulation and after that you had regulating agencies and so, 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 so virtually every Every plant had to get cleaned up, and they got right now. They're cleaned up to the, pretty much to the point. It, you, you can never, if you try to f try for 100% clean up, you, you know, it's not, it's not obviously not doable. But the, but the first increment is is quite doable, and that's what what's been done. So when we hear the politicians talk about trying to get this country be energy independent, most people take that to mean that. Uh, we won't have to use oil from the Middle East or from Venezuela yeah. or from other places that we can survive on coal. This is purely pl political. It's not practical. Well, it's it's a, never going to happen, right? It's unrealistic. In fact, I mean, you just have to go back two years ago, and ethanol was considered the uh, the panacea. That's so that's been a bust, right? Well, it, it's been a bust, and it was it, it should have been well understood in advance that you're using more. About a comparable amount of energy, uh, you know, you know, grow on the corn and uh, harvesting it. And well, how about biofuel? Is that well? Is that well, well the co the corn is one biofuel. The other kind of biofuel was well. The our president a couple of years ago was was going to use this uh, switchgrass as a feedstock for biofuel. Yeah, I'm, I've been reading that uh, they're going to try to get energy out of corn husks yeah, yeah. And, and switch grass and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and, is, and that is that a practical solution? Uh, or, or, or sugar cane. Uh, it, it all works, but the, uh, but the, the, uh, the, the higher the level of waste product, the more you got to refine it to make, to, 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 to produce the liquid fuel. So at some point, uh, I, 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 the comparison I use of, I, I read five or six newspapers a day, so at the end of the week I have a pile of 30 newspapers. If I had, I, I could put that in my stove and help heat my house, and it, it would work, but it wouldn't make me to go sense to go out and buy, buy additional newspapers. So if I heat my house on, if I help heat my house on some waste products, I come out ahead. Well, what about that? What about using garbage? Uh, there, there, there's, about enough, uh, there's about enough garbage in theory to maybe produce four or five percent of the, percent of the electricity in the country. Uh, but uh, I, I've, I've worked as a, I've worked at nuclear power plants, and I've worked at garbage plants producing electricity. And nuclear power plants are simpler. Right. You know, well, you know, a garbage. Every batch of garbage is different. Different contaminations, different emission problems. When when we hear people say we want to be independent of uh, oil, independent. Um, uh, we're never going to be independent with many things, like gallium, for example, or the, the chemicals that we need to make batteries, right? Yeah, the issue right now is the hybrid cars or plug-in plug -in hybrids or, you know, electric. Uh, the, the, the best battery right now is lithium. So for, for, your, you know, for your digital camera, lithium batteries are very good. We don't have any lithium, right? Uh, the big... Big, big supply of lithiums in Bolivia, and uh, apparently the, uh, the, the government of, of Bolivia is now in the process of uh, nationalizing the lithium, so, which basically, uh, but, uh, is, 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 so I guess the answer is that you know, virtually all batteries are toxic. Right. The thing that's not really being addressed with the electric cars, 
to the, to the extent it should be is the toxicity of the batteries and what to do afterwards.